OK, well, we'll come back to that action and update you what happens out on court number three. But for now, we've just been joined by Caroline Wozniacki following her win just earlier on out on court number 12 in straight sets over Alatova. But what a story it was. 6-1 in the first, 5-1 up in the second, and then she took you all the way to a tie break. Just describe what went on in the second set there and how relieved you were to come through. Yeah, um, I played really well. I, pl I started off really well, uh, serve returned well, was up 6-1, 5-1. Everything was going my way. Even if I had a miss hit, it was going in. So I was feeling comfortable, and all of a sudden, I had a maybe one bad game at 5-1 where she was serving, but I was like, it's fine, you know, I'm 5-2 up, it's, it's going to be all right. But she just started playing better. She was going for a shot, she was hitting the lines, and, you know, all of a sudden I'm seeing myself uh, being down 6-5, and I'm like, I need to step, step up, I need to do something because this is not going the right way. Is that where your experience really helps you, that those kind of situations, you know how to get through them? I think so. I just kept my head cool. You know, normally I think someone would panic and, and maybe give up the set, but I just kept fighting and I kept going for, for every ball. Yeah, one of our reporters was down there and she said it wasn't that you sort of stepped to it, it was just that she really suddenly started playing in the second set, really a different player to the first. And how do you try and react when you see that happen? I was trying to mix up the pace a little bit. I was trying to give myself some time and, and not let her uh, be in the zone, but um, it was more difficult than, uh, than it was supposed to be. I was already thinking I was in the locker room uh, having won my match at 6-1-5-1, but it wasn't to be. Well, I have to ask you about your memories of winning here, of course. We've got some footage of when you won the junior girls here back in 2006. It's very short and sweet. But what do you think when you look back at this and you remember winning here as a girl? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's, uh, it's definitely great memories. I can't believe that that's like 2006 or oh, nine no. years ago. It's crazy. But, um, you know, it's nice when I go to Orangi and I see my name up there on the list together with so many other great champions. So it's it's fun. It's I've always loved Wimbledon and it's nice to be back here and with great memories. Well, talking of Orangi, we spotted you out there yesterday doing some very unfamiliar practice on a tennis court. I know that you do do this often, though. You throw American football. I think you were out there with your father yesterday. Just talk do, us yeah. why you do this. Please tell me that that was a good throw. Oh, oh, that was a decent spiral yeah, right there. Yeah. He, he, he for the NFL. It. Yeah, um, you know, it's great for the serve. It's great to warm up my, my arm, and it's fun. I used to do baseball quite a bit. We, I was uh, traveling with a glove and with a baseball, so that was fun as well. But uh, I like to mix it up, and it's just a little bit of fun. And I'm teasing my dad because sometimes his throws aren't as pretty as mine, <laughs> if that, I may say so. <laughs> is that what it's like? Because we, we've seen Andy Murray in the past. He plays a little bit of football mm -hmm. over the with his coaches. I just to that. mix up the, the practice, yeah. otherwise get Boring, don't exactly, it? yeah, and it's you know, warm ups you do the same thing over and over again, and we've done it for 20 years, so it's just fun. I do uh, foot tennis as well, and it just keeps us entertaining and, and makes it more fun, particularly as you say, when you have a whole day off, you've got so many hours of the day to practice. You are such an athlete, not just on the tennis court, not just with American footballs. Let's just remind ourselves of what you did last year. You went and ran the New York Marathon I in did. three hours and 26 minutes, yeah. by the way, Caroline. <laughs> What an impressive time. Just how did you find time to train for that on the tennis circuit? And then how was the whole experience for I've you? always been a runner, so um, that really wasn't the thing. Obviously, uh, running for three and a half hours almost is, is much different than what I was used to. I just tried to do longer runs, and it, it was fun. You know, I, I actually enjoyed the practice, and I enjoyed uh, the competing out there. I hit the wall at like 35 kilometers and I was like, this is not fun anymore. And Serena came she, along to support you. She did, you. yeah, she did, which was great. Um, I, when I when I looked at my phone after the run, it was like, Caroline, just keep going. Move your feet. And I'm like <laughs> thinking to myself, I, I told her, I'm like, give me move, a break. Yeah, Come give on. me a break. I've been <laughs> running for like three hours already. You know, you move your feet. <laughs> oh, but, ask you. but in the end of the day, she was actually a great physio for me afterwards. She was like stretching me and really? she, uh, yeah, it was fun. And she put up this, uh, we went out for dinner and she put up this huge banner saying, congratulations, Caroline. And she knows how much I like my sweets. So she had like two chocolate cakes and red velvet cake for me, so she was the best. She, oh, uh, she yeah. was amazing. Um, well, I've got to ask you about your friendship with Serena because we see so many pictures of both of you on social media. I know you both went to the Taylor Swift concert we just did, this yeah. last weekend. How nice is it to have such a good mate on tour? And what is it? like being friends with really the world number one who's trying to achieve such historic things this year as well well obviously what she's done um on tours is remarkable she's won 20 grand slams so far and uh you know she's an inspiration to all of us um 
But in the end of the day, you know, when we hang out outside of the court, I just see her as Serena. I don't really, we, we don't see each other as the tennis players, you know, it's, uh, it's what we do and what we love to do. But in the end of the day, there's so much more than, than tennis uh, in life. And, you know, we just have a great time. We sing karaoke, we sing along to Taylor Swift and uh, we just have a good time. I've got to ask, I'm not the biggest Taylor Swift fan, but what Taylor Swift song would you sing along to? Which was the one that you and Serena were belting out when it was? Uh, all of them. Oh, I know oh, all of her, go. I know all of her songs. So, uh, yeah. I would sing along to all of them, thinking that I sound great, but I don't really. And could we see you doing another marathon one day, do you think? Probably one day, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about a marathon, maybe a triathlon, so that would I be... I uh, one of them, yeah. yeah did you have a time, when you were doing it, did you have a time in... Mar did you go uh, approach it as competitively as I'm sure you do tennis, or just want yeah, to finish? You know, the thing is, in my head, I was like, I just need to finish. As long as I finish, it'll be fine. But um, so in my head, when I started to working towards the marathon, I was thinking under four hours. But once I started running, I was like, no, you know what? I can do 345. But then the day before, my agent was like, OK, if you do under 330, I'll run around Union Square Park in your tennis dress. And I was like, I told my paces, I said, OK, I need to finish within 330. And uh, so I did and that. He, did he, still, he still needs to run. Uh, oh. So I'm keeping oh, him go. up on that. And now it's on TV, so there's no backing down. And right over there by he the way. Is, yeah. so she's reminding him of what she's got to do. Just back to tennis then. You've never you've never got past the fourth round here at Wimbledon. Now into the third round. Playing Camilla Georgie next. What do you know about her and your anticipation of that match? Well I've played her a few times. She hits every ball as hard as she can and uh, for me it's all about being ready and you know I, I love this event. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to make it past the fourth round and I'm just going to try and do my best uh, my next round. And you're happy as well that the, the conditions now are a little bit easier because I know you said you were here for, for practice yesterday. It was so hot and oppressive and it, it much, much cooler today. So slightly lucky in some ways to have a playing match in better conditions. Yeah, you know, I'm ready for anything. Yeah. Um, we've played in hotter conditions than that, especially in Australia sometimes or in America. But at the end of the day, it's, it's nice to have it a little bit cooler. Uh, it's not often we say that uh, here in England. I know. Just before we let you go, because the Twitter followers will kill me if I forget to ask a couple of the questions they've sent in from you. David asked, when you're in the UK, do you watch any British TV shows? Not really. I mean, I love uh, A League of Their Own with, uh, with James Corden. Yeah. He's hilarious. So, uh, yeah, that's He's one on thing TV in America now, isn't he, He as well? is, yeah. And just lastly from Jess, do you feel more under pressure when your family are watching or is it a bonus to have them watching? It's a bonus for me. I, I love when my family's around. Uh, it's, you know, they're always my biggest support and always there for me no matter what. I'm sure they are. Listen, thank you so much for coming thank and you. chatting Caroline. to us. Really appreciate it. Such a fun lady both on and off the tennis court. Caroline Wozniacki safely into the third round here at Wimbledon.